Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Now, I've been trying to record this video for about the last hour and I've given up. So what I've decided to do is record it live. We'll get through it, we'll figure it out and hopefully by the end you will be a little bit wiser. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the big updates that we've had today for this, the DJI Goggles 2, the updates for the ear units, the V2 goggles, the Avata drone as well. And I'm going to try and answer all of the questions that people have on what the situation is, what works, what doesn't, do the hacks still work, do the mods work? And by the end of it, hopefully you'll have a better picture of the situation. Now I do have my chat window up, which is over there. I am not keeping an eye on it straight in the video at the start. I'll come back to the chat later. So if you have questions, please keep them to the end. I've decided to record it live because this way, at least I know I'll get it done. And instead of me sitting here editing for hours, I'm just gonna go for it. So hello to everyone who's watching. I will be with you later. We'll do that bit at the end of the video. So to start, Today, DJI have pushed out a big update for many parts of their system. The biggest being the update for these, the new Goggles 2, which is version 01.03.0000, which finally brings support for the original DJI FPV ear units, i.e. this thing here, as well as the Cadex Vista and the Run Cam Link. Now, this update allows those ear units to work with the Goggles 2. Alongside the update for the Goggles 2, there is also updates for the ear units as well, which give them compatibility with the Goggles 2. You have to update the Goggles 2 and you have to update the ear units. That update also brings some new functionality for the Goggles 2 and those ear units as well. For instance, when using the original DJI FPV ear units now with the Goggles 2, you get that canvas mode OSD like we had on the O3 system. However, there is a big downside to this update and that is, it is a bit of a software line in the sand. Whilst you update the ear units to work with the Goggles 2, they will no longer work with the V2 goggles or the V1 goggles. This update brings compatibility for those ear units on the Goggle 2, but it doesn't then work with the original goggles. Just to be clear, the update is not forced and you can roll it back. But the thing to understand in this is that the update allows you to have support for the original ear units on the goggles too if you want to but if you do that they will no longer work with the original goggles but if you don't want support with the goggles too don't update and they will still work on the v1s and v2s the basics are update and the ear units will work with the goggles too don't update and the ear units will work with the v1 and v2 this update doesn't change much else on the Goggles 2. For instance, it does add that support for the DIY system, but it still doesn't add support for the FPV drone. So the Goggles 2 now work with the O3 ear unit, the Avata, as well as the DIY ear units, but they still don't work with the V2. There is also another big downside to this update, specifically when using it with the DJI ear unit, and that is recording doesn't work on this ear unit at this moment in time. It basically acts like a Vista. There is no SD card data. There is no SD card format option, and you can't record to the original ear unit. We don't know if DJI is going to fix that over time. At this moment, all we know is to use those ear units with the goggles too. Ooh, sorry, moving that over there. You have to update them. Now, alongside the update for the Goggles 2, there was also an update for the V2 Goggles, which is these here. However, that update really does nothing for the FPV system. It adds some new functionality for the Avata, 30 frames a second modes, remote ID. But what it doesn't do is allow you to use the V2s with the new firmware for the DIY system. It only allows you to use this on the older firmware or use this with that on the newer firmware. Now I can confirm in this firmware update for the goggles too, it makes no changes to the ham file hack 
for the Avata or the O3 ear unit. That all works exactly the same as it did before. O3 and Avata, ham file, absolutely fine. With regards though to the hacks on the ear units, things are a little bit more complicated and I will move on to that in a minute. Alongside the support for the ear units with the goggles too, this new update also brings support for the FPV remote version 2 with the original ear units when using them with the goggles 2 as well, but that is only with the goggles 2. Again, this is very much a line in the sand situation. If you use the original FPV ear units on the older firmware, it works with the goggles V1 and 2 and the black remote, but doesn't work with this. However, if you update the original ear units to the new firmware that works with the goggles too, it no longer works with the black remote and it now works with this. What that means is you've got the new goggles with the new remote which works on all three parts of that system, O3, older ear units and Avata, or if you stick to the old firmware, it's going to work on that. Now, as I mentioned, there are a lot of quirks in this new firmware that you need to be aware of. As I've already said, there is this situation of the fact that it is a bit of a line in the sand, but do note that you can downgrade if you upgrade to this firmware. It is not anti-rollback. This firmware does not affect the root hacks. It does not affect WTFOS. You can still do all of that stuff as long as you've done it beforehand. But what it does mean is you have a line in the sand in the sense of if you want the ear units to work with the digital gog the new goggles too, you have to update, but you lose the backwards compatibility. One nice feature if you do use the ear units with the goggles too is that you no longer have the binding issues with these. If you're using the goggles too with the O3, the ear units or the Avata, it keeps the bindings in changing modes. That though is not the case on the V2s when using it with the older firmware. Now, the big question is what is the situation with the hacks, NACO, the 1200 milliwatt hack, as well as the ham file. As I've said, the ham file for the O3 system and the Avata still works fine on all of these firmware on the goggles 2 and the V2s. As for what hacks are available for the ear units when using them with the goggles too, the situation is very much the same as it is with the O3 ear unit. In fact, when you update the firmware on these ear units to work with the goggles too, they change the protocol and it looks and feels like the O3 ear unit. The menus are the same. You don't have power options to be able to select like you could on the DIY system. It's the same as O3. And DJI are even basically putting the O3 protocol onto these new ear units. Sorry, old ear units. They are not using it the way it was and that's why it's not backwards compatible. As a result of this, there are some differences with the way the hacks work. For instance, the ham file hack that works on O3 also works with the ear unit. It increases the power output and it unlocks the additional channels. For instance, when you use the original DJI ear units with the goggles too, you, it looks and feels like O3 from an RF point of view. The channels are the same. You've only got seven maximum that it's got the additional bit rates, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz, and 40 megahertz. It basically looks and feels like O3. And as a result of that, it behaves like O3 with the hacks and the ham file works with those ear units. It's also quite interesting that the original NACO file still works with those ear units as well if you put them on the internal storage or the SD card. However, that behaves exactly the same as the ham file, apart from it doesn't unlock the additional channels. It gives you the identical level of power as the ham file does, but it doesn't give you the channels. So the basics are use the ham file on the goggles rather than the NACO file, and that way you'll get the full additional features. As for the 1200 milliwatts hack, that doesn't work. That doesn't work in 03. It does not work with these ear units when upgraded to the new firmware version 01.01.0000 for use with the goggles too. Now, 
The last thing I want to touch on is the performance of these hacks with regards to the power output, because I've spent a massive amount of time tonight going over all of this stuff on the Spectrum Analyzer. Just to go to the overhead, the bench is a complete mess. I've been testing everything for absolutely ages. It's been a mammoth task this evening trying to get my head around this all, but we've got it sorted. I've got probably two hours worth of spectrum analysis footage, which I'm probably going to put in a future video. However, in this one, I'm not going to do it and I'm going to explain the basics. What I can say is this, having tested the identical ear unit in the identical position on the old firmware versus the new firmware, the ham file output on 03 is not the same level as 1200 milliwatts was on the original FPV system. However, it isn't correct to directly compare them because the radio protocols are different. The 1200 milliwatts in the original system on the ana analyzer looks dramatically more power than the O3 system or the older units can put out when used with the goggles too. What I can't tell you though is what the power level is because they're not even comparable. The way the systems work are totally different. And what we don't know at this moment in time is if there is a dynamic output on the O3 system compared to the original system. There is hints that there is, but in my testing, I have not observed it. And I have tested it a lot over the last two weeks and I have not been able to see any real indication of dynamic RF behavior, but that isn't to say it isn't there and I need to do more testing. What I can tell you is this, when using the old ear units with the goggles too, you're getting the same power output as you're getting with O3 ear unit. When using the old ear units on the old system, you're getting that 1200 milliwatts. What you can't have is that 1200 milliwatts on the O3 system because it simply doesn't work, but the O3 system doesn't work the same. So that pretty much explains the situation and I'm going to come on to the chat in a minute. The very basics of this are, if you upgrade the ear units, they will only work with the goggles too. You gain basically MSP DisplayPort, which works with Betaflight, but it is worth noting that doesn't work with iNav and it has limited compatibility with Ardra Pilot. You do get that O3 feel. It doesn't look as good as O3 because it's not the same camera, but it behaves like O3 in its RF behavior. Everything has changed. DJI have basically ported the O3 protocol to the original ear units, but if you upgrade, you cannot use it with the Goggles V1, the Goggles V2, or the original Black FPV ear unit remote. If you use it with the Goggles 2, you can though use this remote controller but again, it's a line in the sand. Old firmware works with old goggles and old remote. New firmware works with new goggles and new remote. Some other little things, you cannot spectate with the goggles 2 and the V2 with the DJI FPV ear unit, but you can with the O3 ear unit. And really it's worth understanding that there is a line in the sand, but you are not trapped. If you update, you do have the ability to roll back the firmware if you wanted to. DJI really have done, it's my phone, DJI have really have done sort of what I expected here. I never expected them to go back and change everything. I personally don't think the V2s are going to get an update for this. It's just dead dev time for DJI. If you want to use the ear units with the old system, just leave it on the old firmware. If you want to use it with the goggles too, use it on the new firmware. It really is that simple. What you can't do is have it working with both the V2s and the goggles too at the same time on the old ear unit, but you can on O3. With regards to the hacks, as I've already said, when upgrading the firmware on the old ear unit or O3, it works the same way. Use the ham file on the SD card and that will give you the maximum output and the additional channels. No need to use NACO. NACO power does not work. No 1200 milliwatt mode. No way of changing the power settings at this time either. There is no effect on the goggles too when updated on the DIY side. NACO still works, NACO power still works, and the ham file still works. Most of the limitations are when using it with the goggles too. 
Now, that is it from me on this bit of the video. If you found it interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed. Also, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, please do check them out. I would like to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. I would not be able to keep making content like this without their support. Anyway, from this bit of the video's point of view, that's it from me. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon. Yay! In one! In one! Right.